Now I don't want this channel to be completely based on compressed air engines, but it seems like you guys like watching the videos on my compressed air engines, and if I'm honest, I love building them. Now in my compressed air powered plane version 2 video, I hinted at a future project. What do you mean stick it in a car? Make an air powered car? I... That could be quite cool. So I think it's time to advance the engine a bit. Now the difference between mounting this engine on a plane versus the new project is that it needs to be as light as possible on a plane and also it doesn't matter if it goes full throttle for however long it just needs to run really however I think it's time to see if I can add a throttle to it so here's a compressed air engine the version 3 engine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a compressor attachment using this 3d printed adapter uh, my granddad was kind enough to lend me his compressor so hopefully we can get the engine running for a longer period of time to try very some throttle on it. So let me just take this bottle lid off and I'll put the new connector onto it. So I think I might need to heat up the housing a bit to try thread it in. It's, it's quite a tight fit, which is probably a good thing for the seal in the end. However, it doesn't really go in right now. So let's grab the heat gun. Seems like the PLA is holding up fine. Shout out to 3D Prints UK for sponsoring this. They provide some really good quality PLA. That bond strength is really good. I'm gonna keep heating it up and threading it in. So it's cooled down a bit now. And I'll just add the O-ring into there. And then the engine should fit on top like that. That looks pretty good. So there's one thing that I always forget to mention with this engine in every single compressed air engine video that I've used or uploaded is that what kind of lubricant do I use? I get comments all the time asking me and I seem to always forget to put it in my video. So here it is. I use WD-40 high performance silicon spray lubricant. It's different from regular WD. Uh, 40. It's basically just silicon lubricant, but it's really thin stuff. I bought some silicon grease a while back. It looks almost like a a little like lip thingy jar. Some silicon grease, but it was too thick and it didn't really let the engine uh, run very smooth. So this silicon spray, I literally just turn the engine to the piston. Is at the lowest point so I can see the exhaust open inside there and then I just give it some spray and it's got in my face <laughs> give it some spray and then just sort of let it work its way into the cylinder it makes the engine a bit of a pain to handle now because it's all slippery but it makes it spin nice and smooth what I sometimes also do is I, now I've got this thing on, it's a bit more awkward, but I put this all the way in, spread it into the ball valve, spread it into the ball valve at the top of the engine, and then when the engine turns around, the air will naturally push it into the cylinder. And uh, yeah, let's hook it up to the compressor and see if this doesn't leak. So what I've done is I've lightly clamped the compressor hose into the vise, it's very light so I don't ruin any of the connectors. And do I fill up the tank first or do I plug this in? I'm gonna plug this in first maybe. So now, ah, we have an issue. I need a smaller propeller. Okay, so it's all hooked up to the compressor, and I think it's just time to pressurise it. I'm not sure how much pressure to give it, but let's just try this. So it's leaking out of quite a few places. <laughs> um, I'm not sure exactly what to do about that. Uh, 
I actually think it's leaking out of the connector. Let me plug this in. Yeah, can you hear that? Okay, so it turns out the engine is not the leak. It is leaking slightly out the top of the cylinder here. Um, but that's probably the gasket needs tightening, so I'll tighten up the cylinder head a little bit. Interesting. So this connector is for some reason leaking. I haven't clamped it down hard in here, so it's not that. Sounds like it's internal into in here with this connector. That sounds better. The gauge isn't even reading any pressure, so it's very low pressure at the moment. It's quite annoying that leak, but I think we're just gonna have to deal with it for this. Right, let's increase the pressure and put on my safety glasses. Okay, so that's just going to keep running forever, so uh, let's see if we can add a throttle to it. Now in pretty much all of my compressed air engine videos that I've made, I've had a lot of comments telling me to add a pressure regulator just in front of the engine, uh, between the tank and the engine, to regulate uh, a lot higher pressure down to 60 psi or whatever the engine will run at. However, it's not quite as easy as you might think. You see, the pressure regulators Although in theory look quite simple, to get it to work using 3D printed components might be quite difficult. At least to get a perfect seal and also have the, uh, you need a spring inside of it to sort of gauge the pressure a bit. And as you've probably seen from my previous videos, I don't like working with springs that much. So I reckon just reducing the airflow in front of the engine using some kind of variable valve might do a similar job. So I've been researching a few different valves. And the first thing you might say when I mention variable valves is a ball valve. They're really common and it's normally the first kind of valve that pops into people's heads. However, they're not actually that easy to vary. I made one for my compressed air powered propeller video, uh, which it did seal and it did open and close, but it seemed to just be almost on or off even when I tried to put it halfway. So I've come up with a different solution, or at least I've found a different solution. I'm going to go with a diaphragm valve and I'm just going to draw up a sketch now how that works if you don't know what a diaphragm valve is. So let's see how well I can explain this. Basically the air will come in the front here from the uh, air tank and there will be a diaphragm or a rubber sort of mat which I'm probably going to use uh, the same stuff I made the gaskets out of. And right now, the rubber is sealing here and here, so there's no air flowing through. Now, I don't need this to completely cut out the airflow. I just need it to sort of reduce it. So it doesn't matter if this seals, uh, you know, if it doesn't seal that great. Now, what happens is the piston, if it's pushed up here, the diaphragm will lift up. So it will sort of go like that. And what this allows is the airflow to then flow through and into the engine. Now, I thought this would probably be the simplest type of uh, variable valve I could produce uh, because as long as these are clamped tight and the wind is now opening my door, as long as these sections are clamped really tight, uh, there shouldn't be any kind of leaks around this area. So I'm hoping it will be the easiest to produce and also work very well for varying the throttle. So. Uh, as my pen rolls away. Here are the 3D printed components. Now let's assemble it. 
So this is the main sort of housing part of the valve. The inlet or the outlet is there, it doesn't really matter, it's symmetrical. And they both join here and then this is a section where the gasket will go over and when it pushes down it will seal between the two holes. So what I need to do is I need to get some of this rubber rubber sheeting and cut out a square. Now this is 0.5mm thick rubber sheeting and I'm, I'm not sure whether that's thin or thick enough so it's going to need a bit of experimenting. But either way, let's test this out. So there we have our gasket and that will sit on top of this section. And then on top of that we'll have the piston which will be the bit that pushes down on the gasket to seal it and then the housing for the piston which will also clamp down the gasket. So that should be it. Apart from one last thing, I made this little lever to make it easier to push this down. Uh, I'm not sure how much pressure is going to be pushing it up, so I just thought I'd make this anyway. Right, let's put in the bolts to clamp down the gasket, and then it's time to mount it between the compressor and the engine. Uh, I haven't tightened down all the bolts yet because I want to pressure test it first. And the idea is that it will go between the compressor attachment and the engine. And then once I know it seals properly, I'll add the small little lever, uh, which should add a bit more fine control to that piston because it might be quite sensitive, I'm not quite sure. Yet. Either way, I'm going to mount it between the two sections and we'll give it a quick test. So here we have the main assembly of the compressor inlet here. Unfortunately, I didn't take into account this hexagonal shape of the compressor attachment. So this bolt and this bolt can't be tightened up. Uh, so I'm not sure how hard pressure I can go to if there's only two bolts really holding it in. Uh, these bolts are still slightly threaded into that piece but not very far so I don't really want to go in too high pressure in case this separates. Uh, and the other side is just bolted the same way as the engine was bolted to the bottle lid cap. So let's mount it in the vise and turn the compressor on. And this, where's that leaking from? Still leaking from the compressor attachment. Start the engine. And if I push down the piston, it should slow the engine down. <laughs> it's working! Oh my god, that is so cool! So you can almost idle it and then... Oh, stopped. Get a really low idle speed and then... That is so cool. Right, that kind of hurt my finger trying to press that button down. So I'm going to add the uh, small little lever that I designed, which will give me a bit more leverage to push it down. Probably a bit more throttle control as well. So uh, let's mount that in place. I'm so happy with that. It sounds amazing. Oh, so, so cool. So good. Right, so I've got the small throttle lever in position. I've now pressurised it to 50 psi. Hopefully the diaphragm doesn't burst or anything horribly goes wrong. Uh, the other test was only at 30 psi. So let's plug it in. And start the engine. It's 
so good. So I can fully cut off the engine if I want to just by doing that. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm almost more excited about this throttle than I was with the engine. It just sounds so good. So that's pretty much it for this week's video. Uh, I apologize for it being quite a short sort of design project, just adding this small diaphragm valve. Uh, but quite honestly, it's almost as satisfying as building the whole engine because it just makes everything sound so much cooler. Now, in terms of the leaks that I was having, uh, I'm sure it was leaking in other places other than the actual compressor attachment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go through that over the next week or so, trying to fix all the seals. But I don't want to spend too much time trying to adjust this one because I'm actually going to change the format of this engine uh, to hopefully produce more power for a remote control car. So yeah, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button. And if you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. I'd like to say a huge thanks to all my patrons for supporting me. You guys make these weekly videos possible and I don't think I could do these weekly videos without you. So huge, huge thanks to you guys. And I'm going to leave you with an outro of this engine spinning. See you next week.